G'day, welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're gonna to look at how to survive in the busy emergency department as a doctor. As a doctor in the busy emergency department, you're always working with probability and risks. Every patient you see is always this balance. For example, you have a 48-year-old gentleman with chest pain. Could it be ischemic heart disease, gastroesophageal reflux, or maybe even aortic dissection. So you use your experience, some algorithms, and some tests to make that decision to admit or discharge. But you've got to realize you're always throwing dice. Now, in this presentation, I'll give you 40 tips to how you can weigh some of that dice in your favor. The first tips are to do with chest pain. Tip number one, if someone's writhing around in the bed in chest pain, think aortic dissection. Two, if someone's writhing around in chest pain in the bed and they have an inferior STEMI, think dissection. It just means that they've dissected back into their right coronary artery. Three, chest pain and any neurological symptom is a dissection until you prove it otherwise. Four, repeat the ECG before discharging someone home. You just might be surprised. Five, when you do discharge someone home, tell them you throw dice, that's your job, that you may still be wrong, so if they worsen, feeling unwell, please return. Six, chest pain in a South Pacific Islander generally is bad. You just have to find the pathology. Seven, Use the chest pain algorithm, but not slavishly, because you know it's not perfect. A couple of tips about trauma patients. Number eight, intubate agitated head injured patients, even if the GCS is technically 13, you need to have control of the situation. Sure, check the BSL first, make sure they're not severely hypotensive. Nine, stable. Stable is a culpable term to use patient is hemodynamically not compromised, compromised but compensating or decompensating. This is a stable. Number 10. Scan old people's necks. You'll never clear their x-rays appropriately. 11. Ketamine intravenously allows you to do orthopedic stuff safely like relocating ankles. Two ONG tips. Tip number 12. Remember that when you speak to an ONG team, most of their patients are healthy. They have a completely different worldview to you in emergency. 13. All women with abdominal pain have an ectopic until proven otherwise. A few tips about abdominal pain. Number 14. Diarrhea is not gastroenteritis. For gastroenteritis, you should vomit also. Lots of bad conditions give you loose, mucousy, watery stools. 15. Constipation with abdominal pain in a busy ED in an elderly patient is almost always surgical. Number 16. Learn point of care ultrasound for EFAST, biliary and AAA. 17. If you think it might be surgical, it is. Okay, a few tips about headaches. Tip number 18, if you have a headache with odd neurological symptoms, think venous sinus thrombosis. 19, pain and neurological symptoms equals vascular. For example, a vertebral dissection. 20, if the possibility of a subarachnoid hemorrhage crosses your mind, you need to chase it and rule it out. 21, a patient with a headache who is vomiting is often bad. It's not always migraine. Two tips about drugs. 22. No matter who you are, at some stage you're going to write down the wrong drug or the wrong dose or both. So ideally cross-check it yourself. In the perfect situation, get it cross-checked by a pharmacist on site in the ED. 23. Be very, very careful with adrenaline. Check the dose, then check it again, check the dilution, and always label your syringes.
A few tips about clinical administering on the floor if you're the senior in that area. Number 24, walk and talk with the in charge nurse. Communication is vital. 25, if you are in charge, try to not get caught out doing some long procedure like complex suturing. 26, keep eyeballing. Patients unexpectedly deteriorate and die in the three C's, corners, corridors, and chairs. 27, always keep a recess bed available. You really don't want to be caught out in resuscitating patients in corridors. A few tips about blood tests. 28. If someone looks sick, get a venous blood gas and a lactate, preferably bedside. 29. Patients can die of sepsis with normal white cell counts and normal CRPs. 30. Arterial blood gases generally add little to most patients. You've got a pulse oximeter and often you don't know the FiO2 anyway. Number 31. There's no such thing as routine bloods. Choose your blood tests. If you don't, some irrelevant red herring will come up, which you'll have to deal with. Stress. Number 32. Remember, under stress, you are a toddler and can concentrate on only one thing at a time. Patients who represent to the emergency department. They get admitted or observed in a short stay area. Algorithms. Number 34. Get junior doctors to use clinical algorithms, especially when you're very busy. They may not be perfect, but generally they're well thought out and are safe. Tip number 35. Establish with the patient and the family a ceiling of care as early as you can. This can save a whole lot of anguish. Tip number 36. Most junior doctors don't know eyes. You'll have to check it out yourself especially when it comes to periorbital and orbital cellulitis. Tip number 37. Your mothers may think you're the linchpin of care in the emergency department. Truth is, you're a part of a team, all of whom are essential to the patient's care. 38. Get on with the nurses. If you do, work will be hard but enjoyable. If not, it will be a living hell. The final two tips are how to survive long term in the emergency department. So number 39, the solution is dilution. Escape and enjoy things outside work to cleanse your body and soul. And finally number 40, have one person you trust who you can debrief with. Well, I think that'll just about do for 40 tips to how to survive a busy emergency department in one coffee. Stay safe and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.